Hi there, it's me, Jordan Van Haslow. Welcome to Jordan Van Haslow and Friends live on Hot 702.5 FM Las Vegas. Let's get on with the show. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Showtime with Jordan Van Haslow and friends right here on Hot 702.5 FM Las Vegas. I am so excited to sit down with today's guest. He is a DJ who has played everywhere from New York City to India to Tel Aviv. And now he's based in Miami Beach. I'm really, really jealous because where I'm sitting right now, it's a little gloomy. And Mm -hmm. um, I imagine it's really beautiful down on the beach. But nevertheless, he's here. I'm going to put my jealousy aside and I can't wait to get get to know him. Ladies and gentlemen, our new friend, Trotter. Thank you Uh so much for for, for joining. Oh, thank you so much for having me. It's my pleasure. And it is gorgeous. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, see, I'm mad at you. (laughs) It's a little little nice out today. I had to to step away from the beach to come, but it's my pleasure to come come chat with you today. Cool. So I know you've you, you've been DJing for a very long time and you've held some really great residencies. Yeah, since 2015. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's a, a really good. We're hitting the 10 year mark soon. Time passes so quickly. So how did you come to, to DJing? Like, did you, were you, music was something you, you liked as a kid? Did, like, how, how did DJing come about? You know, it's funny. I really didn't think about DJing at all until I was asked to do it by a really drunk drag queen named Mary Cherry back in 2015, August of 2015. And I, this is, I, I was a body painter at the time. See, before I was the DJ, before I moved to New York, before I moved to Miami, before all this, I had collected music. My dad was a collector of music. I collected music. I always downloaded Napster. I would stay up all night trying to get remixes and like trying to find the best vibe for for my friends' parties, best mixes, mm-hmm. make soundtracks for my life. And it wasn't. And then I was in the industry as a as a uh, face and body painter for a lot of like the underground parties in New York at the time. Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. I was asked by my friend at the time to play for one of her parties. And I was just like, you know, I have never done it. I Sure, I can do it, but I've also got some friends. Good baby, you're hired. So then after that, <laughs> um, after I got hired, uh, things just kind of took off on its own and people started like listening to me in a different way and feeling. And cause you know, when you play, a, when you play music that makes that, what makes you groove and then other people can, you know, resemble it and vibe with it 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 kind of takes takes its own life on its own and yeah and then it just was like one thing it led to another and it opened more doors than i thought could be possible yeah and now i have now i'm here in miami fast forward that's exciting. fast forward nine years later so how yeah. did you where'd you grow up where'd you grow up and how did you get to new york so i actually grew up in Nor- greensboro north carolina i was there okay for- yeah, so and start where the uh, civil rights movement first started at the Woolworths, and you know we're, we're we had we have seven co- seven campuses, a huge music, huge indie rock hipster music scene. Big shout out to my UNCG College Hill people out there, also known as UNC Gay, but you know it's another topic. But uh, yeah, so <laughs> I, I lived in greensboro up until i was 17 and then i went to college in brevard brevard college in um from 2007 till i'm sorry from 2004 to 2007 then i moved back to greensboro tried to do my own thing and that's where i started getting like a, an event kind of i got the like the party bug in a way like i started collaborating with other local artists and throwing like Andy Warhol style parties in art warehouses and it started to grow on its own. And that's when I started to get this kind of knack for like being sort of like a middleman for bringing people together in a way, you know, through the arts. And I did that for a couple of years up until the warehouse got shut down. And then- <laughs> Was it <Yeah>. your fault? <laughs> uh, no comment. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to mention who the where the warehouse was, but it was they had, it, it, the parties got so big. I had to separate myself 
from it and they did their own thing and they had to change the name of the gallery and a lot of things but other than that it was it was a great turnout brought the community together brought artists and brought different like it would start out as a brought out the police <laughs> kind of, yeah, it was very red, a little bit of crossing the red tape there, but it was, it was awesome. It was back in the heyday. And I think when I was 24, I took the initiative to make my move to New York. I bought a bus pass. It was back then it was the Chinatown Fung Hua bus. You could get. Oh my God. The $20 each way. It's uh -huh. so funny. Oh I used God. to take it years ago. Like I, I spend a lot of time in Massachusetts and I take it up all the time like to go visit friends in boston um wow. but i was always laugh because like it cost more to actually get down to the bus stop than it did to actually travel three states on the bus <laughs> wow yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> wow it's so you oh go ahead yeah no the chinatown bus is everywhere it's so funny you, that's hilarious so you arrived to new york city on a chinatown bus with, with nothing but a dream Thirty dollars to my name. Landed in Canal Street, ready for the city. <laughs> <laughs> so, did you know anybody here, or was it kind of like a, I'm just gonna make this move? Or did you have like any like a job or anything lined up? Like, how how did that happen? So yes, I had um I had a job offer for Greenpeace at the time, and. Huh. And I just got done uh, working a couple of catering. See, I was working in hospitality a lot and I was bouncing between job to job to job doing that. And then when I got this job offer, I was like, let me do it. It was actually me. I bought a concert ticket to see go to go see Cut Copy when I was really wasted. And I said, yes, that is the night I'm going to go to New York and move there. <laughs> and that was two months before I moved. Yeah. And um, I love it. Yeah. And then I made this plan and my friends actually from Greensboro made, they moved to New York the same way through the Chinatown bus. And I was, <laughs> I was able to stay with them um, for a hop around in Brooklyn for a little bit and crash with them until I was able to oh, stay. That's really them. cool. Yeah. I couch surf for about like four, four months, four or five months or so till I was able to, until one of my couch surfers offered me his uh his apartment and it was like right in the middle of bushwick before there was house of yes before the, there was literally an organic food store being built and one and one bodega that was it and now there's <laughs> twenty thousand michelin star restaurants 20 nightclubs and it's amazing how that happened because it, uh, it seems like it happened really really quickly like i remember just when first when people first started moving to williamsburg and um, you know, it, like people who were like priced out, like a lot of artists and, and things and like galleries started open there. And it was just so funny because I remember like nobody wanting to go to Brooklyn. And now everybody lives in Brooklyn and trying to get them to come to Manhattan is like a, oh, I really have to go into the city. Okay. So it, it's, it's funny how that's a happened. It's like a war a little bit. It's like, come over here. We promise you this. No, but we're better. <laughs> <laughs> exactly so how did you get into the into the club scene um in new york just just through networking with friends and such so it's funny i um i networked uh, a little bit on a lot i it wasn't until i went to my cousin introduced me to the burning man scene in 2020 okay i'm sorry in 2012 and I started to learn, I started to get to know a lot of party goers and um, the producers that were behind the scenes of New York. And then when I, then when I left from Burning Man, I took what I learned on the playa and, and applied it to, I tried to apply it to my everyday lifestyle. And one day I was like, all right, let me try this. So I started body painting. I would take like a, my body painting kit and a black light and I would go bar hopping. And, uh, and then I would start plugging my stuff right next to the bar and people would start getting painted and I would get to know them. And then one day I face painted the producer of this really huge warehouse party called Bang On. And, uh -huh. he, and yeah, and he invited me to work on like the art installation and um, for the New Year's Eve party. And after that, it just took off. I was booked at Mysteryland. I was booked at Elements Fest. 
for, for doing art installation and, and body painting. And then sooner or later, it was House of Yes parties and like all the Burning Man parties. So that's how I kind of really got to kind of get affiliated with in a really big way. I was very lucky because yeah. of timing and the placement. And it really came down to just going to Burning Man that one year and getting to know a lot of behind the scenes people that make this happen, that make something happen out of nothing, you know? And those are some pretty powerful people to get to know, get to know and have that. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. So do you still body paint? I do. I do actually. I took a break from it, but I've recently been doing some stuff here and there in Miami um, for private events and parties, uh, doing small murals on the wall to doing special events in Wynwood. And it's kind of getting taking a life on its own because it's it's it, it was big in New York, but in Miami, it's a little different. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. It's, what yeah. do you attribute that to? Probably because uh, it's it, the scene is a little different. People like to New York. It's a little more crunchier or a little more grungier. But in Miami, people like to wear nicer things. And it's just gotten, you know, like but I've met a very good crew of people that are very open, you know, lovely and positive people that appreciate having that feeling of being primal, prim primordial energy around them. So it sounds like Miami Beach it just tends to be bougier. So it's not- Yes, it is it's... a bit bougier, yes. And it's a little, little, yeah, tactless. Yeah. Other than that, <laughs> <laughs> but other than that, um, you know, like I say with everywhere, you sift through, or in New York, you sift through the trash, you find some gems and there's some pretty bright gems here. Yeah. How did you end up in Miami Beach? The first time I visited Miami, I was a driver for this art group from Manhattan to uh, Wynwood. I was a, I was an art driver for their graffiti art for Basel. It was my first art Basel in, I think, 2012. First time I came to Miami, I did not like it. I thought it was trash. And then I still liked I still liked it, though. I had the best time of my life, to be honest. And then, <laughs> and then I just kept and then one time um, I think it was after I DJed and I think it was 2016. I came back for Art Basel. I got to DJ with the D with the G House click. Um, what's his name? Kid Moss, DJ Kid Moss and Ernesto. Ernesto is now uh, one of the residents of, uh, of the label Dirty Bird. It's really good. Mm -hmm. uh, Venezuelan house DJ, tech house DJ, or like he does a lot of trap too. Yeah. And then when I came back, I just started to visit more and more and it just started and I started to enjoy the vibe and it started, it's, it was just work. It just felt like it was working for me. And then come 2019, I was kind of working a dead end job at a dive bar in Brooklyn, not really happy or getting anywhere. And somebody affiliate of mine, Jason Perez, offered me a job to work at his art gallery in Miami for Art Basel. And I said, well, heck yeah, why not? Like I'll <laughs> quit quit working at a dive bar and work at a high end art gallery in, my, in South Miami Beach, why not? You know, it sounds, yeah. like, a, it sounds like a great trade off. And uh, <laughs> And that was honestly one of the craziest weeks I have ever endured. It was a lot of work, but I got to meet a lot of people. I was able to prove myself that I can manage and do things. And everything was going like everything was going really, really great. And then right at 2020 hit, everything was just kind of like full pause. I got into a car crash right after my gig on New Year's. Um, oh, no. An escalade, an escalade hit me. Or oh I, my god! I T-boned an Escalade on my scooter. It was on the way to a gig right after I had another gig. That was my New Year's day. Wow! And and it, and, it, and it was all downhill from there. Oh my god! It was. <laughs> and, and then two months later, and then I had. I mean, at the time, I was working as a resident for Time Out Market Miami. Thank God I had that because. That was the only thing I could do is just DJ. I couldn't lift. I couldn't, I couldn't serve. I really couldn't stand, you know, for more than a cut like five hours without feeling pain, you know? And, yeah. and uh, that was a really, really rough spot in my life, that part. And then the pandemic hit. And then I was yeah. Really so tell, tell me about how did your, your pandemic experience, I mean, live entertainment really just like came to a halt. 
Although I guess Florida didn't really close down so much the same way they did in like New York. And uh, it was closed for like a month and then everything kind of just <laughs> <laughs> took on its own form, its own animal here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> did people did people really start going back out the same way they did beforehand? Or like was it business as usual? Or did it kind of slowly take time to get everybody out in the same way they previously had? Slowly took time for, but it, I would say about a month or two, people were out, were out ready to party. They really didn't care. And that's yeah. why everybody was hating on Florida so much and all that. But, you know, it honestly, it, it made it kind of better and worse for nightlife because uh, normally before you could get into a lot of these clubs without a problem, without, you know, feeling comfortable and when they had to reopen, they had strict policy of social distancing. And if you had to go and if you were to go into a club, you would have to pay for a table, which would be between five to ten thousand dollars. Oh wow. So it actually brought this kind of element of elitism that mm -hmm. makes sense to more so in Miami and made people more, more, uh, what's the word? Like reticent? More jaded. Yeah. It's makes them, a little, made them a little bit more jaded and the nightlife scene has changed. And I don't feel like for the better, for example. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's like, we're not having as many places to dance or, you know, be open as much. Um, Yowzer. So 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 what's what's this? You're very interesting because you 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 your approach to life seems very bohemian. Like you you paint, you work in an art gallery, you're a music aficionado. Was there ever like a big big plan or a big big goal? Like, is there something that's like you're like okay, this is where I want my career, where I want to take my career? Or do you kind of just come at life just more like, let's let's enjoy the day and let's figure out, oh, here's an opportunity, let's take that. Honestly, like how calculated are you career-wise? I've Calcul been, yeah, no, um, I've been, it's kind of been, being creative has always been kind of a goal of mine mm -hmm. to live off of, to live off that in some way or form and not necessarily get famous, but I've always wanted to, I've always been good at a lot of things and I've been trying to figure out, you know, what, what I can do to incorporate all these things that I can do into, you know, into a career. And this has kind of evolved into what I'm doing now. And it wasn't planned. It really like, just, just, I guess, putting the intention of, you know, I want to, I want to be my own boss. I want to set my own schedule. I want to create something that people can relate to you know it it really just took time and stepping out of your comfort zone and a risk yeah you know? something you've never done before but you but you feel like you can do it you know totally so uh, was there ever a moment especially once you started djing where you're like oh, okay i've got this so like i feel like i'm like really doing this yeah Oh man, it was actually at Mystery Land my first time when I got to open up for Walker and Royce. I mm. think in 2017, it was at the big top. It's a couple of moments like that. The first one was then and seeing it was my first time DJing in front of a huge like mainstream audience per se. And yeah. And the video is also available. You can see the video that of what I have on youtube.com slash MS Trotter art, um, where it's just the entire area is empty and then it gradually gets fuller and fuller and fuller. And seeing the seeing strangers dance and vibe and react to what you found the song all alone in your home and you're just you're dancing to yourself in the in your apartment, and then all of a sudden you're playing it in front of like five, seven hundred people, five to seven hundred. Yeah thousand to two thousand people you know it's just like wow like i i can really make this happen i can really bring people together yeah is there is there is there any place that you haven't played that you'd love to play or any festival that you're like god i'd love to have the would, opportunity yeah i know i would love to play at the istanbul burn i would mm -hmm. love to play at like the eclipse burn or an eclipse, uh, like one of the eclipse uh, parties would be fun, you know, something that has a lot of meaning because somebody, 
recently asked me what would be a great festival what would be the best festival for me to play at and be like honestly um i wouldn't i want to i want to play at a festival where i can where it has meaning and i can enjoy it and yeah something, something like that you know an eclipse or, or somewhere in acropolis mm -hmm. so, I, I would love to play at. so tell me about your process as a dj and and, and how you go about putting your sets together and preparing, right? Because I, I don't think I've ever, I think Jose and I may have had some conversations about it, but I think most of the time, you know, a lot of times you just think of like Paris Hilton with a <laughs> can in her ear, <laughs> standing, behind, standing behind a laptop. <laughs> talk to me, talk to me about, about being a DJ and how you go about your work. So, <laughs> First, I try not to think like Paris. <laughs> <laughs> be your own artist. Don't try to, don't, don't be Paris Hilton. Whenever I go about a gig or I go about a vibe, I, I look for a mood and, you know, I try to visualize, visualize the venue in your head and then visual. And then when you have a song that you, that you like right now, have play it, that song in your head in that venue and then see if that would, you know, feel if that feels right for you, then mm -hmm. add, it, add it to your mix, you know? Something that yeah. will enlighten, yeah, like a mood board and enlightens yeah. it is, and enhances the atmosphere. Has there ever been an event that just like, just didn't work? Like whether it was just like the mood of the attendees or just there was a weird vibe and where it's yeah. like, God, no oh, matter no. what I throw out, these people are just not like with it. <laughs> like if something if you're somewhere that you really are not comfortable in that you i don't know you're just not sure about your mixes are not gonna flow <laughs> it's a combination of like internally subconsciously you don't want to be here there was one time that i there's a no there's so many times actually but a couple, <laughs> of, it's, a couple of highlights that i will say um the first time i like last time i was djing at, at a kind of like an open play party right and mm -hmm. they had me in kind of a separate room and as i was djing the mood of the party was very subdued and dark and no matter how many celsius's i could drink or rebels i drank i would fall the fuck asleep it was so Oh, excuse me, pardon my French. Yeah, I would, and it's like, what is going on? And I think it's just because my body, my my head, my my heart does not want to be there. It's just not. Yeah. There. And the same thing goes for, you know, I've played at a few places, like after hours kind of places in New York where it was, you know, it gets a little grimy, but then back of your mind, it's like, you know, why, what am I doing here? You know, I shouldn't be wasting, like, this is not going to get me in here. You know, you right. gotta ask yourself, like, you know, is this healthy for me? You know, it's the same thing when you pick up a vice, like what are the positive and pros and like what this is gonna get make me happy? Is this gonna make me happy in the long run? You know? Yeah. And I'm starting to learn how to choose my battles and and it's a process, you know. You you pick up a gig and if you love it, great, you stick with it. But if you have problems and then it's like, you're just really uncomfortable with it. And it's just, your mixes are just not flowing. Then it's just not gonna, then it's not for you, you know? Yeah, no, completely. In terms of the type of music that you play, are you, are you, are you, um, are you kind of genre agnostic or? I am, I am me. So I, <laughs> <laughs> my, so my last name Trotter, I like to hop around a lot. I don't want to stick somebody on one single note, you know? It's like, okay, we're going to Burkheim, we're going to hear dark techno all night, and it's just one tempo, it's one tone, it's one note, it's just doesn't change. No, I like to go from, you know, feeling the broad spectrum of things. You know, people want to feel the ups and downs. And, no, totally. And totally. when you have something with the melody and it flows, it, it, it brings it it really helps recycle that energy you know so you're not just dance 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 oh my god i gotta you know it's like a roller coaster you want to get yeah. on a like a like a good roller coaster ride you want to get on it again totally totally <laughs> get on a rickety roller coaster i don't want to ride that again <laughs> i love it so what do you have coming up 
I'm going to be playing at the new Nathan's Beach Club um, regularly. And I have a new uh, stream, live stream uh, that's coming out, or a recorded live stream that's coming out um, with um, MIA FM next month, I think on October 3rd. And I am working on production at the moment and getting dates together. Hopefully go back to New York. I have a plan to go to Denver at some point. Getting all the ducks in a row. Totally. You're, you're pretty busy. How, how far out do you typically, like your schedule, how far out do you book? So what's funny, I try to book in advance, but nobody in Miami does that. <laughs> Everybody in Miami is like, oh, can you do it tomorrow? Oh, can you do it this Friday? Yeah, it's... It's Vegas is like that. I, <laughs> and I think it's, it's, and it's so, it was, I remember when I first uh, I came that. to Vegas, it was such a, it was such a, like a, a, like to get my mind around, it was so weird, right? Because New York, everything, you know, bought Broadway shows, people buy tickets for shows next year. And it's yeah. always about the reservation, reservation, reservation. Whereas Vegas, like invites to anything, it's like if you say this is happening two weeks later, it just like whoop, goes over their heads. They it's always it. like, what's happening tomorrow? Okay, we'll go. <laughs> so, exactly. so it, makes, it makes it difficult in terms of planning and, and all of that. So, yeah. No, I yeah. Really it does like like when, unless it's like a really good party, people actually plan in advance and it's a and it's a great party. Yeah. But Everything here is super, super last minute. And New York City, yeah, of course, you need at least a month to two months in advance. Europe, you need to plan at least three to four four months, I would say, in advance out. And that's what I'm doing right now. Um, you just gotta get your set your feelers, get to know the people that support you and that believe in you that are also in the industry. Cause you will have some haters out there that will just people out there do get jealous when they see other talent. And mm -hmm. I'm not gonna say and I'm not gonna say I don't get jealous because you know it's part of life. But like I don't see it as jealousy. I look up to people, you know, take that as looking up to somebody, you know? And don't people take that jealousy and they will and, and it will consume them and it will also try to force it on to you. So like just stay in your path. And that's what I'm also trying to do as well. And that's Again, living in Miami, that's hard to do because there's, yeah. there's not a lot of there's not a lot of people I could just tell everything about, you know? Right. No, that makes sense. So do, is Miami it for you? Like, do you think you'll stay there forever and ever and ever? Uh, um, I'm here for now, but <laughs> I, just, I feel like I have maybe another year or two here. And then I might want to start uh, looking into maybe uh, moving to Mexico or Spain. Oh, it just depends. Yeah, I really, I really like Miami. I do. I just feel like they, I could move. I could. Yes, I'm doing what I'm doing right now here for the most part, and um, I want to do more. And yeah. Still, and you know what, Miami's Miami's still great. If I stay here, I stay here. I. You know, I'm trying not to plan too much in advance because, you know, what we have to worry about now. No, to totally. <clears throat> Why Mexico in particular? I vibe there a lot. And it's the same feeling that I got when I was visiting Miami. It mm. was the feeling of like, I could, this could work, you know, this could, everybody likes me. I get, a, you know, when you're friendly, like, that's the thing. Like when you go somewhere and you vibe with people and you just feel comfortable you know, that's, that's where it's at. No, totally. Just, and Miami just, did feel like that before the pandemic. Yeah. Good. Well, I think everything's a lot just so different after the pandemic, right? I think, oh. and I think a lot of it has to do with people like moving. Like what I thought was really interesting about pandemic, I feel like now everyone I knew in Los Angeles moved to Palm Springs uh -huh. and everyone I knew from New York moved to Los Angeles. <laughs> so uh -huh. going back, like being back in New York, it's all of a sudden, it's like, wait a second. When I'm in New York, it's like, I, you know, all the old people are, don't, aren't here anymore. So it, 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 it all feels really weird. And, and you have to go to Brooklyn. <laughs> so what does a typical day in your life look like? Huh. Um, I, or is there no such thing as a typical day? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's right now it's been, it's, it's kind of funny you mentioned that my, my four, I'm starting to get used to my typical day because this is the first time that I'm able to, the for the first time in like ever, 
in the past three years, I've been able to just have my own schedule. So I've been just making up every day as I go along, like, like lately, just, yeah, of course, work out and, you know, do emails and such. But before that, it used to be just work and then home. Yeah. And then the gig. But now it's, you know, Miami, because I live in, I live in South Beach. It's my typical days. Like I wake up clean, do emails, try to find some music through my playlists on SoundCloud or through my artistry, artist, artist database. And then today I just went to the beach. <laughs> <laughs> the season's a bit slow right now but uh it'll pick up in about a month oh there you go okay i guess we're like in between that well i guess you're in miami so like like i imagine people go to miami during the fall and winter and go back up north or somewhere else in the summer i would imagine because it's so hot right like i spent a i spent a, an entire summer living in palm springs and i thought i was gonna like die it was like 120 <laughs> degrees uh, yeah it was it's very it gets actually it was very hot this year yeah i haven't experienced that kind of heat i don't think in a I think ever yeah it's pretty it's pretty insane is there any place like we talked about like festivals you'd want to play but again you, you kind of travel around is there any place you haven't been that you'd like to that you'd like to go I would love to go to Egypt. I would love to go to, I would love to go there. I'd love to go to Japan. I would love to go to, I would love to go to Africa. Yeah. Australia. Is there any places you, you don't want to go back to? Mm -mm. Reno. <laughs> 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 oh my God, I'll never go back to <laughs> Were you, were you on, on, on Reno for business or for pleasure? Both. <laughs> <laughs> this is right after um after Burning Man. So I got to see what the city of Reno had to offer. And <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. So talk to me about just like, you know, where you get your inspiration from. Are there any other DJs? You're talking about jealousy and not jealousy. Any other DJs that like either like inspire you or mm -hmm. like particular artists that you like really, really vibe with? So right now, um, I mean, I'm, I like to Martinez Brothers a lot. Um, I've liked, I like uh, Casey Lights recently. He's a, uh, he's a queer DJ, I believe. And he's been getting really up and coming. And Sam Blackie, I've been looking up to a lot lately. And you know, there's so many new art. There's so much new stuff coming out every day. There's thousands of hundreds of thousands of new stuff coming out every day. And there's new artists ever since the pandemic happened, there was, there's been a, a tsunami effect of new music and new people that have come out since then. It's and almost overwhelming. At it least, is. I, I think, like, because I, you know, like, like I, 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 I'm a, a Spotify subscriber, and you know, they always have like the New Music Friday, and and it's like, oh, this guy sounds really cool. Let me, say, you know, there, there's so many, there's so much to save, and you end up. I, I feel like for me, a lot of times, I totally forget. Oh my God, who is that artist of that song that I really love? Because yeah. since I her first heard it, I've heard like 500 <coughs> other ones as well. Right, no, exactly. And that's and that's same thing as being a DJ. Like there are times when I have a whole set together and then I'm in the middle of my set. I'm like, wait, what's that one song? Uh, <laughs> you know, and there's, you know, and it's, and the word in it has love and you type in love and there's 20 billion songs with the title love in it you know <laughs> and then you think it's that one but it's not and i'm like all right i'll go with this <laughs> where do you where do you listen to your music um so i used to be a spotify subscriber i listen to that sometimes but mostly on soundcloud that one soundcloud's i like it it has mainstream and it has a lot of electronic music that's coming out and a lot of indie it has a lot of indie rock electronic and mainstream stuff that's coming out and at the same time, people are releasing free download remixes of mashups. And just like sometimes you'll you'll hear it'll be a better version of a mainstream song, you know? Yeah. And that's how that's how I've gotten through the community and networked as well. And and it's a really good platform, I think. Yeah. Do you do you do any remixing yourself or no? Yeah, I do mashups and remixing. Uh, I'll do it on the spot. I have not recorded them per se. I mean, I've recorded them in my mixing, but all almost all of my mixing, I'll mash up and do remixes. Oh, on cool. The yeah. Yay. That's pretty awesome. Well, yeah. to tell me, where can we 
find and follow you? So you can follow me on Instagram at DJ Mike Trotter. Uh, also, my mixes are all located at soundcloud.com slash MS Trotter Art. You can also search on SoundCloud DJ Mike Trotter. Same thing for Twitter and Tumblr. Or I don't even have a Tumblr. <laughs> Does anyone have Tumblr, Tumblr anymore? Nobody has a Tumblr anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think they screwed up when um, Yahoo bought it and then they banned porn. And I think that that's um, supposed to have been what most of the people were using it for because once they banned porn, everybody left. I think that's why I left. No. <laughs> <laughs> Funny. Are you, I, are you, I had no idea Twitter had the had porn for the longest time. Oh, I think, and that's what happened. I think that everyone left Tumblr for Twitter for that very oh. reason. Wow. <laughs> Are you really, really active on social? Like, I'm so hopeless with social. And, so, like, I really need to just, like, pay somebody to handle my social because I'll yeah. go through strokes. Well, I'll go through moments of, like, oh, my God, I have this wonderful idea. This will be the editorial calendar for the next three weeks. And, and then it's, like, uh, yeah. It's work. It feels like work now. Yeah. I remember when I was on Instagram posting, like, weird pictures just for fun, you know? Mm -hmm. and not getting judged, not caring. Oh, I had a typo, whatever. Now it's like people really like you have to have, you know, uh, a 4K video or you have to have uh, the sharp. You have to have a professional photo in each thing to either get traction. And, you know, it's just gotten so overwhelming that like I really don't care. But you have to find the fun in it again. Like, yeah, you just have to make it fun, make it your own. And that's what. A lot of these other DJs that do their posts at night, you know, I commend them. Like what like Sam Blackie, she'll she'll do a recap. She'll be like, Thank you guys for coming to my show. And she'll do her makeup, like her night routine regimen at the same time. And so you're you're seeing her, you're seeing her talk about the show while she's doing her makeup, or like so you're getting a tutorial, self-care tutorial at the same time. <laughs> So like, I love that. It's, well, yeah, so, so it's, it's, it's actually open. pretty brilliant because she's she's also saving time. She's killing two birds with one stone, exactly. three birds, right? You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> she's 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 both you know promoting her show and she's moisturizing and moisturizing exactly exactly. <laughs> you know, do you do and... a lot of like live streams and things like that? Or are you are you are you um is your page is your is your social like more about the music and such or are you one of those oh people? i'm i i have some live streams coming up i might have a live stream for twit for um twister nathan's coming up but um that's gonna be with my mia fm in the next month uh right. third, my next live stream uh, but I just think it's with your like Instagram account. Are you one of those people who just walks around? Sometimes I used to do and just time. And rattles things off the top of your head. So I used to do uh, live streams on Instagram, but Instagram would flag and shut down a lot of things. So I stopped doing that. I would actually started doing on Twitter. Um, I'm starting to get on TikTok actually to start doing live streams. I think TikTok is like. I, I, I'm obsessed with TikTok. I don't I'm post, not getting into but it's it. like, but oh my god, it's like all of a sudden you're like, you'll just, you know, it's like let me just check in and see, you know, the folks that I follow, you know, and then all of a sudden I'll look up and it's like I have been literally staring at my phone for an hour and fifteen minutes. It's like it's addictive. Good. It's like, seriously, it's, it's like totally good. addictive. <laughs> you know, because then you just think, well, you know, there's just short videos. Okay, just one more. Okay, just one more. Okay, there just are one full more. on episodes on TikTok. <laughs> It's pretty yeah. nuts. But then now everyone, what I notice is that most people just kind of re, they repost their TikToks on Instagram. So I just, I don't know, it's all overwhelming. And then you, you see, I don't know. I, yeah, it I'm, is. Turning off, I'm turning off my computer. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh my God. So, so do you, and you're on TikTok now. So what, what, what's your TikTok name? Michael Trotter, one of no, that's not it. Yeah, it's I put it as DJ Mike Trotter or the Mike Mike Trotter Michael Trotter one hundred and five. But I will get back to you on that one. <laughs> cool. Oh my god. Well, thank you for joining us today. It's been a blast to get acquainted with you. Nice to get acquainted with you too. Yeah, Jose keeps threatening wanting want me to come down to Florida, and maybe I'll I will if I if, if I come down this fall. We'll grab a coffee or something. 
right? Yeah, absolutely. I would, be, I would love that. Thank you so okay. much. Watch me now.